So, good day everyone and welcome to our educational webinar proudly brought to you by the International Trade Council. I am delighted to be your host today. Before we proceed, could you please confirm in the chat if the audio and visuals or us are clear on your end and let's take a moment to ensure that everything is functioning properly. So, since there is no one answering as of the moment, um, I believe that everything is working per per perfectly. So, let's um, proceed to the introduction. Thank you, everyone, again. So, today we are thrilled to present a session filled with valuable insights in the, on the topic of Women in Business. Leadership and Empowerment Conference. Our focus will be on various critical themes such as leading women in technology, uh, the impacts and challenges they face in their careers, tech innovation and its future implication, career development strategies, and innovative approaches to business success. We will also discuss how to build better futures for women in business and led leadership and share unique experiences from the workplace. So we are honored to have an outstanding panel of speakers today, including Sophie Agostina, Global Marketing Strategy Lead at IBM and a key figure at Kouto Communication Group and Impact Tech Summit DE and I. Margaret Safford, Marketing Consultant at Fortune 500 and Goldman Sachs. 10KSB, Melissa Angelini, Investors Relation Director at ProCops Group, and Amalia Gregorian, Director at Luxury Lifestyle Awards. These esteemed presenters will bring a wealth of expertise and experience to the table, and we eagerly eager to learn from them. Without further delay, I will pass the virtual stage to our distinguished speakers. Okay, thank you, Lady Anne. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Um, okay. So hopefully everyone can see my screen, but thank you everyone for attending the webinar today. I'm really excited to share some of the thoughts around um, women in business and our experiences and creating better futures. As Lady Anne just mentioned, I am honored to be here with Sophia Augustina. And she and I are going to together present our, a case study based on some of the perspectives and themes from our own experience working in some of the large corporations that, that were mentioned. So um, our, our themes are really going to center around our experiences at some of the world's largest companies working within corporate environments, being a woman within those environments, um, and then also launching our own business. So going from really, really large matrix environments to starting and creating and the different challenges that and opportunities that each one each one brings. Um, layered on to that, we're going to be talking a little bit about um, gender equity, both in the corporate world and also as business owners. So bringing a perspective from both of those sides. Uh, we're going to share some learnings and strategies that we have employed to build better futures. Um, so really thinking about ways that we've been able to make a bigger impact and how we've um, worked through some challenges that we've faced throughout our careers. Thoughts on how we can all work together to build better futures. And then we're just going to be talking about a lot about our story and our learnings, but just kind of a key takeaway is the importance of sharing your own story and learning. So, so for the next 15, 20 minutes, we're going to talk through um, these main themes based on a case study that we are going to share from our own experiences. So with that, I would love to spend a little bit of time to introduce all of the great experience of my co-speaker here, Sophia Augustina. So as was mentioned, she um, has a wealth of experience across global marketing, full funnel, consumer centric, and really, really importantly, ROI marketing, um, driving ROI. Um, she and I have launched uh, and we have created a nine C's framework, which is a strategy all about getting closer to your customer. And so, as you can see from that, that high level introduction, we're you know big, big company to launching our own company. So 
Sophia is we're really lucky to have her here today. She's a recognized industry speaker. Um, she's um, been speaking all over the country in the U.S. Um, and abroad with things such as Forrester, ANA, LinkedIn, CMO Council, and others. She's also a board member, and she's also has a lot of experience in other really large companies such as um, Nuance Communication, Veracode, and Iron Mountain and Lycos. So she and I are both in Boston, and so um, it's my pleasure to kind of have the chance to talk to share our key learnings and themes for this webinar with together with Sophia. So with that, Thanks, I'm going to talk to Sophia. Thanks, Margaret. Oh, and this is Margaret. Um, and, you know, she has a wealth of um, knowledge and expertise as well uh, for about 15 years in the B2C and retail um, companies. Um, and basically, Margaret and I met um, about two years ago when we were at an executive um, leadership program and at the time we were you know uh, working at uh, I was working at IBM and uh, I was trying to you know see how I can uh, create more impact as well as growth um, individually as well as uh, you know the the team uh, if you go to the next slide uh, sure. Margaret yeah um, and at the time Margaret and I you know we were in the same um, a, a leadership a coaching program and just it looks like Sophia left the stage um but so I can pick up there so yeah so she and I met um in the summer of 2022 we were both looking we met at an executive leadership program where we were looking to um gain you know gain networks gain connections learn new skills and think of different ways we could make a bigger impact both within the large companies that we were working with and also personally. Um, so we we both being in the Boston area had the chance to kind of meet up and push each other and kind of have the chance to think about where we wanted to grow our careers, where we wanted to build our careers, what really motivated us, um, areas where it might feel a little bit scary to us, where we we wanted to explore, but we never felt maybe the confidence to or lacked the knowledge of how to get there. Um, so we kind of started together as accountability partners in this case, which I think is a really, really big um, key key thing is having someone to help you, you know, to be a sounding board, to push you a little further. And so, yeah, so we started, at, we decided, we, we met and we said, why don't, what, why don't we think about writing an article together, publishing an article and thinking about the things we're passionate about first and foremost. So. We were both from marketing backgrounds. As I mentioned, she was working on a B2B perspective. I was working with some large consumer brands um, such as Colgate and Procter and & Gamble. And so we wanted to kind of say together this, our perspectives from working within these large B2B and B2C marketing environments, we would have some unique, unique insights to share. And we also started thinking about our passion areas, which were really around marketing technology and innovation and all of the different tools and um, technology out in the market and how it, marketing technology could actually help um, help add value and benefit for your health and well-being. So we took a risk and we decided to write this article and um, put forward our perspectives and we, we published it on LinkedIn. And then as a result of that, started to grow grow you know more confidence grow a following and we started to build out a series of articles um and i think something that's really interesting about that as a as a case study in, in building better futures and thinking about women in business is that um we were really able to by doing this activate our network um and i think in this case thinking about um a day, all the community of, of not just women, but everyone that we knew that we'd worked with, um, that we could really connect with to include their perspective. So we started thinking about who we could collaborate with um, to bring different different inputs in and started different ways to get our message out, out into the world. Um, and so with that kind of evolved, um, evolved some other ideas about about this framework that we're now launching, uh, the nine C's, which is really all the different inputs from a customer centric journey um, to be able to, um, you know, start thinking about 
a business idea and more for, you know, so we started, we took, we took a couple of risks and started to get our, our published. And then we started to say, what, what about actually making this into a business? Um, so I think there's some interesting insights here. Um, I think the other key thing is that a lot of this is so relationship based um, in terms of finding our community, finding people um, that we could really tap into to explore ideas together um, and make you know more more out of one thing than more out of it if by by reaching and activating with other people and. I think in a, in a certain case, it's um, also thinking about ways to um, give back, right? So as part of this, as part of this entrepreneurial journey, um, one thing that I started to get involved in was mentoring and advising small business CEOs. So based on my own experience of building and launching a business, um, I've, take, I've taken on different roles where I work with businesses to help them achieve growth plans in terms of revenue and employees. And that comes in all shapes and sizes. So yes, it's like this formal program but that I'm part of, but there's also, you know, by taking some of these risks and by putting yourself out there, um, there's also more organic conversations that start to happen and people start to reach out and they want to know how you did certain things. And so it's, it's being able to mentor and advise, um, and advise based on those insights. And, and, and I don't know, Sophia, if you're back or not, but um, I, I'm not really sure if, if, but I want to see if you had anything to, if you are anything to add in here. <laughs> okay, maybe she's not here. But anyway, I guess the key takeaway here, in addition to all of these things is that, um, working together and launching launching our business together and taking all of these inputs from our experiences within large corporate environments, from experiences in an executive learning program, um, in the experiences of building out our network, in the experiences of, of trying new ways to, you know, to take some risks. Um, we've been able to launch our business together, leveraging our unique, diverse experiences, history, backgrounds, and much, much stronger because we're able to um, work collaboratively together to, um, you know, to take all of our differences and make it way better than, than just one individual impact. Okay, so the last slide I'm gonna share is a key takeaway for everybody here. Um, and that is remember A, B, C, D. So this is a really easy way to remember some of the key themes we're talking about. <laughs> um, so one is authenticity, right? So um, I think along the way, you know, it's it's really been useful to have such a broad experience base from big corporations where you get access to all sorts of training and learning and you get to meet so many people and, and have such great experiences. But you know, you also want to make sure that within those experiences, or even with starting your own business, that you don't lose who you are. And in, in a lot of the business owners that I work with and mentor, um, one of the key criteria for a growth plan has to be that it fits you. So you want to find the, something that really fits with who you are, where you can really be authentic. Um, bold. So just do it. You know, sometimes you take some risks and you're not always sure how, what the outcome might be. And not everything's going to be a success, but I think that there's always, um, you know, a lot of value to just doing it, right? Be a little bit bold, take a few risks when they relate to your packet, your pa passion. Um, the other theme for C is community. So we wouldn't be able to do any of the things, whether in large corporations or small or mid, 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 middle, mid-size, um, you know, without building that community of advocates, of collaborators, of people that you trust, that trust you, that you can support and then help you thrive and, and give back to. So um, with both Sophia and I, we, we're both on different boards where we help kind of advise and give back to passion, things we're passionate about. Um, so that also allows a chance to meet new people and learn and build. And then last one is disruptive. So um, deliver value at the right time. I, I put in this 
um, this magazine cover that we were on with the title of Disruptive Marketing. But so you can kind of see our journey of publishing a first article on LinkedIn a couple of, you know, a year or so ago, and now, you know, having it featured in a magazine with Disruptive Marketing. So if I, if you could remember anything from, from our talk, it's remember ABCD, um, authentic, bold, build community, um, and disruptive. So with that, I think that is my time. I don't know, Sophia, if you've been able to, to join. I guess not. So um, with that, I will thank you. Um, and I will pass it over to Melissa, our next speaker. Thank you very much, Margaret. So allow me one minute to share my presentation. You guys are seeing the presentation, right? Okay, so thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. And thank you, Margaret. Um, I, I think my presentation resonates with your last slide, but I would like to start with a little brain teaser. And maybe some of you already know this riddle, um, but bear with me for a moment, right? So imagine a father and his son, they are in a car accident, the father dies, the boys rush to the hospital. He gets there. The surgeon looks at him and he says, I cannot operate on this boy. He is my son. How is that possible? And when I heard that, and I got it wrong, but it took me by surprise when I first heard. So what I did was I asked my daughter, my seven-year-old daughter, the same question. And she gave me an amazing answer because she came to me and she said, mom, it's easy. The other one is the other dad because this boy has two dads. And although I admire her diverse mind, it was a stark to me to see that even children, like a seven-year-old, like my daughter, who I originally thought that I was raising without any bias, can still be influenced by gender stereotypes. And unfortunately, this does not come as a surprise. I was looking up when I saw this riddle and everything that happened, that there was a study that they did with the same riddle and 74% of the participants assumed that the surgeon was a man. So the bottom line here is that very few people can link a woman to a high-end position. And why is that? And the answer is because there are still to this date very few women on the top at the top. Now, about 12 years ago or something like that, in one of the most watched TED Talks of all time, Sheryl Sandberg, CEO of Facebook, asked this same question. And if you look at the graph, the numbers tell the same story quite clearly. We see that. You know, and what is the problem? Women are educated. About 6% of master's degrees today, they are earned by women. We see here in the graph that about 40% of management positions are held by women. But the problem is when you move up the leadership ladder, that's when you really start to see the gender gap. And the further up you go, the gender gap gets really large, really fast. Women represent only 25% of C-level positions. And when you look at Fortune 500 companies, for example, only 10% of them have a woman as a CEO. And today, still, about 50% of U.S. companies have no woman, and I mean none, in their leadership teams. So this, what does this mean? This represents missed opportunities, stifled voices, unrealized potential. And we can see this gap that I'm showing here in every sector. If we look at the governments, for example, out of the, I think, 193 heads of state, only 13 are women. And Sandberg said that in her talk. And 12 years ago, the number was nine. Nine women were head of states. And today, 12 years later, 
the numbers didn't change that much. And this actually does not make sense for one, because we know that a, a diverse leadership team outperforms competition by over 51%. And also at the world today, at the times that we have, we see that you know the leadership, the leadership skills that are needed are much more focused on the soft skills like empathetic leadership, compassion, inclusivity, collective intelligence, in all areas where we excel. And yet, we are still underrepresented in all those senior positions. So we know we need women at the top, and we need them because we need to reshape the conversation and to change the dynamic. I think the question is, how? How can we fix this? There are several answers. I think I'm going to give some tips uh, throughout the presentation, but, but I believe that first we need to keep raising awareness on the matter, and we need to empower ourselves. We need to be confident. We need to speak up. So why are we not doing that? Um, I think also there are several answers, but what I can see, what we can see is that women systematically underestimate their own abilities. Very much like, you know, the imposter syndrome, uh, where it prevents us from fully embracing our potential and seizing our opportunities. It's usually that nagging voice in our heads, or unfortunately, sometimes the nagging voice of others that says, no, you're not good enough. And I have a case, I remember once I was, you know, I was at this company and we had this 360 evaluation process. So I had to evaluate myself, my peers had to evaluate myself, my subordinates, and of course, my, my leader. Uh, so I did everything, everyone did everything. And my boss was going to give me the feedback uh, in person. So before he started the meeting, and before he opened and showed me anything, and I hadn't seen the results, I had only answered, I, I had only seen my answer. He goes and he says, look, I'm usually very hard on everyone that I evaluate because I think this is the time that I can really push you guys for you to be the best as you can be and for you to achieve greatness. But in your case, you were tougher on yourself than I could have ever been. And actually, you were tougher on yourself than your peers were with you and then your subordinates were with you. So what happened? And I was sitting there looking at him and you know, trying to find an answer. But deep down, I knew what was going on. It's usually because women downplay, we downplay our accomplishments. And we always think we could have done better or, you know, we attribute our success to external factor. Um, and men, they actually, they do the opposite. They attribute their success to themselves. After all, if you ask him, they're going to say, well, I'm great, aren't I? I mean, why are you even bothering asking? And, and by the way, all of my peers, they were men, and they all evaluated themselves better than I did with myself. So when you think of that, I'm not alone. And if any of you actually went through that, you're also not alone. This is something that even, you know, the most accomplished leaders have been through at some point in their careers. So here I put just some, some, some examples. Um, take Tina Fey, take Sheryl Sandberg, Mary Strip, or Indra Noy, you know, the, the former CEO of PepsiCo. They have all been there and the public spoke about it. But I think the main difference, you know what sets them apart is that they didn't let the self-doubt hold them back. They pushed through it and I'm sure so we can, mm. so can we. So let this be a reminder that we have the power to challenge these beliefs. Let's try to shift the perspective and embrace our achievements. A few years ago, another story that happened to me. When my daughter was about six months old, I got this amazing job opportunity and I, I wanted to take it. And as a matter of fact, I took it. But uh, 
I was a first time mom. My daughter was six months old. So I was still trying to navigate, you know, being a new mom with the responsibility of being a new job. And for me, this new job was like um, a, a big movement. I was coming out from the consultant world to the corporate world. And then one day, a, a very senior leader at the company implied that I was a bad mom because I was leaving my daughter at home to go to work. Um, and I was, you know, I was very angry, but I was over, I overcame with doubt and guilt and all those questions that I kept asking myself, am I doing the right thing? Should I be home? Should I do this? They stayed with me. And the funny thing is he was also a father, but he also had a family, but he was only the father in his mind. And I was the mom. And although I didn't let that, you know, dictate my future because I stayed and in the in three years, I got three promotions. I was still angry. It was something that, you know, it still bothered me from time to time. But recently, when I was finishing an executive program, a boardroom program for women, one of the speakers told me a story, a simple story that was life changing for me. So she goes. Uh, I was talking to my son the other day and I asked him, if you're standing on the moon and you want to see, if you're standing on earth, sorry, and you want to see the moon, where would you look? And his, her son goes, well, I will look up. So she says, yes, very well. But what about if you're on the moon and you want to see the earth, where would you look? So he waited a few seconds and said, well, I will look down. So she replies, Actually, if you look down, you're going to see your feet. You forgot to change your perspective. If you are on the moon, you have to look up to see the earth. And this simple story made a huge impact on me, mostly because it took me back to that, you know, bad mom episode and made me realize that the problem wasn't me. The problem was with him. It was his reflection of his own biases and misconceptions rather than any failing on my part. But the reaction, it was up to me. So by recognizing that we have the power to control our response, we can reclaim our sense of selves. And that's how we can break free from, you know, old patterns of thinking. It's up to us to change the, percep the, percep the perspective, sorry, believing ourselves and embrace change. But of course, sometimes it feels that it's easier said than done, right? So how do we break free from those patterns? What do we do? I think there are several ways, and I really like what Margaret said about, you know, the ABCD, and I think this correlates with that. Um, so I would like to share a few tips with you. The first one is awareness. Acknowledge the biases challenges the, and the challenges you face. Speak up about them. Most importantly, speak up with your family, speak up with your kids. They have to know that this exists and speak up at your jobs. Second, empowerment. Shift your perspective, rewrite the narrative of your life. Don't let anyone dictate what you can do or what you cannot do. And of course, in this case here, there is also a gap between men and women. Um, there is a study that says that, you know, men will apply for a job or a promotion when they meet about 60% of the requirements. But a woman, she will not apply for a job or a promotion unless she meets 100% of the requirements. So let's try to take risks, be confident. That's what empowerment is all about. And the third one is build a strong network. Cultivate relationships with mentors, sponsors, allies who can support and uplift you. This is very important. Having mentors is correlated with, you know, promotions. And as you can imagine, men, they have significantly more mentors than women. And try to build a diverse network on the mentor side. Um, not only women, I mean. Men, when they mentor women, it's not only affected, but it's also impactful for them. And women, what is our job? Let's be mentors. Let, let's look for mentors. Let's not only be a role model. Let's make a difference and help each other. And I think my last three tips are, you know, from Sheryl Sandberg's book. I really liked her book. 
And those are sit at a table, make your partner a real partner. Don't leave before you leave. So sit at the table. This is what we've been discussing here is like claim your seat, take leadership roles, be bold, like Margaret said. Make your partner a real partner. Here is, I don't know if you guys watch it, but there is a new Netflix show um, that is called Fair Play. Not going to spoil you with, you know, what happens. But the interesting thing is that it's about this couple that works together. And at one point, they think that the boy will get the promotion. But also, but actually what happens is the girl gets the promotion. And we can see in the series, and that's what they highlight, all the kinds of, you know, troubles, negative comments, negative reactions that they can have. Um, and this is basically because usually men's success is often celebrated in relationships. But when the dynamic shifts and is the other way around, it can become a threat. So I was very interesting about, about the series. I thought it was you know, a bit heavy, but I liked it. So I was looking further uh, about this. And I was reading the other day an interview of the writer, and it's a woman. And she says that what she wanted to do was to highlight the pressure that we see in society, where you know a, a woman's success can make her partner feel small. So with this, I say, let's redefine what it means to have a real partner. Let's redefine that for, you know, for, for our family, for our kids. So they, they know that it's about creating a relationship where both partners, doesn't matter the gender, they can thrive together regardless of any traditional gender roles. And the last one is don't leave before you leave. Stay fully engaged. Pursue what you want. Sandberg talks about, you know, the tendency that usually we have of, you know, dwelling on the future. What about if we get married, if we have a kid, what is going to happen with our jobs? Don't think about that. Seize the moment. Enjoy and seize the opportunities that you have. Because when we hold ourselves back, it doesn't matter if it's in big or small ways. What, is, what happens is, you know, we lack confidence and we don't raise our hands. This is what happens. So... Let's change the game. In the world today, now more than ever, we need a diverse perspective to solve the problems we are facing. So as we wrap up, and this is going to be the last slide, I'd like to leave you with you know, a moment of reflection. I invite you to take a deep breath and pause for a moment. I know it's difficult, but let's try to let go of any tension and now allow yourself to be really immersed and present in this moment. I would like to share you a poem by you know, Becky Hamsley. Uh, so she sat at the back and they said she was shy. She led from the front and they hated her pride. They asked her advice and they questioned her guidance. They branded her loud, then were shocked by her silence. When she shared no ambition, they said it was sad so she told them her dreams, and they said she was mad. They told her they would listen, then covered their ears, and gave her a hug while they laughed at her fears. She listened to all of it, thinking she could be the girl they told her to be best as she could. But one day she asked what was best for herself, instead of trying to please everyone else. So she walked to the forest and stood with trees. She heard the wind whisper and dance with the leaves. She spoke to the will of the, the elm and the pine, and she told them what she had been told after time after time. She told them she felt she was never enough. She was either too little or far, far too much, too loud or too quiet, too fierce or too weak, too wise or too foolish, too bold or too meek. Then she found a small clearing surrounded by firs, and she stopped, and she heard what the trees said to her. And she sat here for hours, not wanting to leave, for the forest said nothing. It just let her breathe. So with this, let's slow down, reconnect with yourselves. Let's change biases, embrace our worth, and support each other. Together, we can create a future that we are proud to leave to our children. And as Sandberg said as well, Let's create a future where our daughters have the choice not only to just succeed, but also to be liked for their accomplishments. 
Thank you very much. With this, I will pass it over to Amalia. Hi, everyone, and thank you very much, Melissa, for a beautiful presentation and the poem that was very in deep, actually. So, my name is Amalia, and I represent Luxury Love Salwars Company. And I want to thank you, everyone, for joining this uh, webinar, and especially Kelly for organizing this beautiful event, because I believe that this is very powerful and important subject that we're discussing today, because it can be a life changer if we work it out. Um, so I'm going to share with you my presentation. Give me just a, one second. So we're talking today about women in leadership and women in business. But what I want to ask you to think about is what is it to be a woman? Uh, before we think on how you can become a good leader as a woman, how you can become a good business leader, what is it to be a woman? They say it's hard to be a woman because you must think like a man, act like a lady, look like a young girl, and work like a horse. Isn't it hard? I believe it's hard enough. I've been asking this question myself, what is it to be a woman? Because... Being a young girl who was born in the Caucasian uh, region, in Armenian family, the former Soviet Union Republic, I've been taught that being a woman means that being a cooker, being a cleaner, being a housewife, being everything but not a leader. How bad it is, because in all of my life I've been feeling that I don't want to do all of that. I want to concentrate on myself, but not others. Because just think about it. A woman throughout her whole life, she always belonged to someone because she has different roles in her life. So let's have a look what kind of roles do we have. Uh, when we speak about the roles, here we have so many options that we can take on. We are born as a daughter of someone, right? We become a sister of someone, then we are a friend of someone, we become someone's wife, someone's mother, we are professional in our field, in the best scenario, we become a boss, and then we become someone's grandmother. So it's always someone that we belong to. Think about it. You're not yourself, you always belong to someone. You forget that in the middle, there is a human, first of all, and then everyone else. But they don't like this idea of you being a leader because they would much rather prefer you to stay home do housework you know to clean to cook to feed to raise kids to do everything but not to be a leader how hard it is to live in such an environment uh, in the time when you actually want to be a leader want to become that strong person and women are, uh, always belong to someone like i said but not themselves. But this problem becomes even worse when we look at another map. I want to show you one very important map, which I found terrible for me. This is a secretary at birth uh, back to 2021. Imagine this. Imagine a world without women. And we're going to that because just only in 2021, around 126 million women in the world are believed to be missing as a result of the parents choosing to abort the female fetuses. Just think about it. In many countries, including my country, um, they believe that it would be much better that they will have a baby boy instead of having a baby girl. Because they strongly believe that if you have a baby boy, that boy will uh, become an adult person. He will be successful. He will be able to feed his family. He will be able to support his family, his parents, and to take care about them. But they reduce and they just reject the idea of having a baby girl who will become a great leader, a doctor, a lawyer a politician, professional, that can actually make a better difference and that can be a leader, and that can support the family. Just think about it. 126 million women never born. 126 daughters never born. 126 million 
wife, sisters, they were never born. Isn't it that terrible? Just because of one stereotype that women are not as successful as men and they would much rather prefer to have a boy instead of a girl. So these stereotypes about women, they are actually um, affecting in the business as well. Because um, there are stereotypes about women in general that people usually think that women are not as intelligent as men. They're more soft, they're too emotional. And there are some stereotypes about women as a leaders. They say that women as a leaders, they are more pushy, they can be more aggressive, uh, or in, in general, they're worse than men. What does it mean? It means that you can't really win. When you take this uh, idea of leadership, for me to be a good leader, to be sort of a masculine, I'm a bad woman. And if I'm a good woman, I'm a bad leader. So this becomes an impossible dilemma and it causes enough fear in our brains for us to lean out. And so let's have a look on how gender stereotypes kill women's self-confidence. Uh, so in many times, the problem is that because of all those stereotypes, women are hesitant to take some risk and to, uh, to be like more active during different business meetings. They will not be raising their hand in a challenging assignment. They will not be advocating for themselves for a promotion at their job. They will not apply for a certain jobs because they do believe they're not that strong and that smart as men are. And especially in the fields that are generally, you know, stereotypically believed uh, men perform better for like science, like math, like technology. So Melissa mentioned in her presentation that the studies show that women feel that they have to have at least 100% of the job qualifications before they would apply for a job, while men feel that they need only 50% of that. Just think about it, right? The stereotypes kill how much that they kill women's self-confidence. Now, there is a bad truth behind this. And the bad truth is that women actually work much more and much harder. So around, around the world, the women on average, they would work 4.5 hours of unpaid work each day, while men will do less half of that. And for every single dollar that women will uh, earn, they would invest 80 cents in the family, while men will only invest 30 cents. So the study from 2019 said that if we could close the gender gap by 2025, which as we can see, unfortunately is not happening right now, the global economy could see $28 trillion growth. Just think about it, only because of this gender equality, $28 trillion growth. So we have to act and we have to do something in order to make it better future. So what can we do and how we can advance in women leadership. I have a few suggestions for you that I want to bring to your attention. So what we can do, in my opinion, is that we can identify the potential leaders in an earlier stage. That would include uh, enabling potential leadership uh, candidates to obtain a wealth of feedback in their early point of the career through a different type of assignment, through a mentorship, through coaching all of which will allow them to develop uh, different networks and demonstrate their ability to take greater responsibilities. What we can do, we can also establish different types of mentorship programs that will focus on the sponsorship as well, because the research showed that the sponsorship is more effective at helping advance leadership positions than mentorship only. So what we can do is that women actually um, boost their leadership abilities through joining different type of women's professional organizations. And there is another study from 2023 that shows that the researchers surveyed members of a women lead organizations in the United States, and they found that the experiences within these women lead organizations allow members to hone uh, their leadership abilities and network with other women work directly with and observe women leaders and then receive support from them and to take leadership roles more active. 
And last but not least, we can focus on allyship. Because it's not only women that are um, uh, ones who have to help to boost the number of female leaders. Men has a big role in this job as well, because male executives who are trained on how to be leaders are far more like um, how to be allies are far more likely to uh, speak up about uh, the different type of incidents in the gender inequality than men who are not trained in this approach. And this happens actually because uh, they already the man they are already in a position of a power and they are not going to be penalized by speaking the way a woman would. So, thanks to these type of uh, actions that we can take and all other different efforts that my colleagues also men uh, mentioned in their presentations around the globe, empowering women to lead, we have a very big future coming and we have a very big promise. But I want to ask you, please, everyone, to think what do you find to, uh, nowadays is the most difficult job in the world? And if you do not have an answer, I actually have an answer for you. For that, I need to share with you another screen. I want to invite you, please, to watch this um, video with me. The title that we have going right now is Director of Operations, but it's really kind of so much more than that. Responsibilities and requirements are, are really quite extensive. Uh, first category for the requirements would be mobility. This job requires that you must be able to work standing up most or really all of the time, uh, constantly on your feet, constantly bending over, constantly exerting yourself, a high level of stamina. Uh, uh, okay. That's a lot. For how many, like, for how many hours? Uh, 135 hours to unlimited hours a week. It's basically 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I'm sure you'll have a chance from time to time to maybe just sit down here and there, yeah? Uh, you mean like a break? Yeah. Uh, no, there are no breaks available. Is, is that even legal? Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. Okay, yeah. so like no lunch? You can or... have lunch, but only when the associate is done eating their lunch. Uh. I think that's a little intense. No, no not that's crazy. Now this position requires excellent negotiation and interpersonal skill. We're really looking for someone that might have a degree in uh, medicine, in finance, and the culinary arts. You must be able to wear several hats. Associate needs constant attention. Sometimes they have to stay up with an associate throughout the night. Being able to work in a chaotic environment, if you, if you had a life, we'd ask you to sort of give that life up. No vacations. In fact, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, and holidays, the workload is going to go up, and we demand that with, with a happy disposition. Uh, that's almost cruel. <laughs> that's almost uh, a very, very sick, twisted joke. Don't worry about when there's time to sleep or... Oh, no time to sleep. Yeah, all-encompassing, all almost. That's exactly right. 365 days a year? Yes. No, that's that's inhumane. That's that's very insane. The meaningful connections that you make and the, the feeling that you get from really helping your associate are immeasurable. Also, let's cover the salary. The position is going to pay absolutely nothing. Excuse me? No. Nobody's doing that for free. Yeah, pro bono. <laughs> completely for free. No. What if I told you there's someone that actually currently uh, holds this position right now? Billions of people, actually. Who? Moms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Moms. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> So, I think now, um, ladies and gentlemen, if you are present here, you do understand now what is it the most difficult job in the world. And the most difficult job in the world, is my opinion, is to be a woman, a true leader, a mom. And what I want to leave you with today with one thought, if whenever people will be doubting on how far you can go, 
I would really, really encourage you to go so far that you cannot hear these people anymore. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for that wonderful presentation, everyone. We will now open um, the floor for your questions. Please submit your queries using the Q&A tab or the chat box, and I will select a few for our speakers to address live. This is a great opportunity to gain deeper insights for their um, presentation. So let's make discussion the discussion as engaging and informative as possible. But before that, I have um, um, an announcement here. So just wanted to inform everyone that today's session has been recorded and will soon be available on the ITC YouTube channel for your references. And if you are not ready or not already a member of the International Trade Council, your participation today entitles you to complementary membership. This is a wonderful opportunity to connect with our global community and take advantage of our resources. And for all of the participants, um, we'll receive a certificate of participation as a token of our appreciation. So please keep an eye on your email in the incoming days for further instruction on how to claim your certificate. So we were, um, we were now ready for your questions. So let me show this one on stage. So Ms. Mavis wanted to say thank you for everyone for your presentation. She's really glad that she joined. Thank you for always changing the narrative. So I have a question here from Michelle. Michelle. So how do you overcome the barriers to be where you are today? To all of you speakers. Maybe Miss Amalia or Melissa will start. Believe in yourself, regardless of what people say. That's the only thing. Because like I said, for me, for example, an Armenian woman who've been told that you would rather go to kitchen, you would rather be your wife, you would rather become a mom, you don't go and do this leadership position. And if I would have a brother, he would be in the leadership position because he's a man, he's more masculine, he can do better. Like I said, 126 million women were never born just because of that idea of women to be not that strong as men. So for me, it was always, I'm going to show you that I can do much better just because I know. Believe in yourself and have a vision. That's the most important. Yeah, I think it's very aligned with Amalia and those tips that are shared that are very connected with Amalia presentation. Create awareness, empower yourself, speak up, be confident, believe in yourself. Don't leave before you leave. Have mentors, have allies. I mean, I think it's an ongoing exercise that we have to remind ourselves every day and we have to keep doing it. It's not something that, you know, it's going to happen overnight. But I think it's something that if we make the effort, we can change that. How about you, Miss Margaret? Yeah, I would agree with a lot of the points that were just made, but I think it's, it's always thinking about like it's it's constant. There's always you know new barriers. So it's being a little. It's going back to the A B C D that I mentioned before. You know, being authentic, taking some risks, um, being disruptive when you need to be. You know, having a really strong community um, and just it's. But it's a, it's an ongoing thing. It's not just so you do it once and all of a sudden all the barriers are um, <laughs> you know have disappeared. So. So yeah, and, and I think it's it's always having a vision, thinking about the vision of where you want to get to and 
um, building building that community that can help you get there and then giving back along the way. Thank you so much. So I wanted to show this one. Um, mentors and sponsors are very powerful in career progression for women. How would you recommend we find these mentors and sponsors? Any tips? So I, I, I can share my case. What I did was, I, f first, I thought about the mentors that I could have throughout my career, right? Or the people that I worked with or who could help me and, and the connections that I had in my line of work. And then I started to expand that into which sector do I want to go? Which subjects do I want to talk about? Who could help me with that? And then also I expanded into you know, the leadership programs that I took uh, and all of that. And how could I create this network within everything that I was doing? And this really helped me because it actually opens great possibilities because you know someone that knows someone that can help you and we start talking about so at the minute at the minute that you start talking about it what you want it's easier because then people can also help you to achieve that but i would say look for throughout your career look for throughout you know your education your own group that you have today because they can help you achieve those people Okay, so um, do you want it to um, answer this one also, Miss Amalia and Miss Margaret? I agree. I think being specific um, is is very helpful to find the mentors and sponsors that you're looking that, that would you know that can help um, for career progression. I think the other thing is it goes back to one of the things I was saying about fits you, you know, sometimes you get assigned a mentor or a sponsor through different programs and it may not be the perfect fit for many, many reasons. And so you want to make sure that, um, you know, you have that authentic fit. And then I think, you know, with a lot of the business owners that I work with, there's just so many programs and different areas that you can become a part of that offer a lot of different um different access to resources, whether it be mentors or whether it be opportunities to get out and um, meet um, and, and be like, a, like, again, I love the idea of being very specific um, because I think people can help more when they know kind of where, you know, kind of have a feel for where, what, how they can help. I think people generally want to help. Um, so I guess those would be my, there's, there's, there's lots and lots of resources. It's finding what fits you and being intentional about it. Yeah, so what I can say that, first of all, you have to identify which industry you want to go further and find yourself, your career. First, like we mentioned, you need to have a vision where I want to be. Then you kind of start Googling. Actually, I usually start with Google. We, we live in such a powerful technological world where everything is available online. You don't even need to know anyone. You can just start online. For example, you have an industry. I'll give you an example of mine, hospitality. Um, you just go Google and research any organizations that is within the hospitality sector. You Google different events where you can attend to meet the right people. So the most important for you is just, first of all, to identify your vision next, to understand your goal. What is that you want to achieve? Then to find the right audience and the right people that can help you. So different type of events, organizations that you can join, these type of webinars where you can meet different people. And then what you do, you just network. Share your ideas. Offer some options to collaborate. Offer something that you can offer them to help them. And every person will accept your help. If you genuinely want to help, help them first, and they can help you later stage. You know, just try to bring some value so that they can see you, they can understand the potential in you, and then you are in the game. Just for, uh, create your focus, understand where you want to be, with whom do you want to be, and Google it. Thank you for, for those people who created Google and Internet. They made our life way much more easy. 
Thank you so much. So I have also a question here from Natasha. Are there any women in business online groups that you would recommend us joining? How can we create or join a network that will help us in businesses? I think it's very aligned with Amalia said. Um, I, for example, I am in several groups, but it, it, within my industry, right? Capital markets, investor relations, finance. And I found, for example, the executive program that I told you about is a boardroom program only for women. And I wanted a, only for women because I really wanted to create that group and that connection and those discussions. But I think it really depends on the industry that you're at. And the way that Amalia said, I think it's a great way for you to do it. Like Google it, try to find it. You're going to start finding and creating those connections. Thank you so much, um, everyone. So, yeah, um, I think or I believe all of the questions here are, are, are already answered. So, L Lady Anne, sorry, I think there is only one about like courses or resources or books oh, sure. that we could recommend. Um, on my end, um, I think there are several ones, but that there is one that I even spoke about um, in my lecture that I loved it. That is from Sheryl Sandberg. That is called Lean In, um, Women Work and the Will to Lead. I think it's a very good book and brings um, several interesting insights that we can work on a daily basis. Okay, so I also have a question here from Susan Falola. Lack of funding and investment in women is very daunting. How do we navigate against the current cons constraints? I would say being at the top. If we make our voices heard and there are more of us at the top, we can change that. We can create a future where this is not going to be an issue anymore. I don't think we're going to change for today or for tomorrow, but we can change maybe for our kids. So that's why I'm speaking up about it and I'm trying to learn more and more because I think we have the power to do something. It's not going to change for us maybe or maybe not for my generation, but it will change for others. I would say dream big and create greater things because you can say anything. We can discuss anything on this meeting, but if we don't bring results, it's not going to help. So only when the, the society can see that women are creating something that is very valuable to the world, then they will understand that women are actually so much more powerful other than being on a kitchen, being a wife, being a mother and just a daughter, but they can also be in a leadership positions. And we do have cases like that in politics, in science, in every industry. We do have great women. So Let's just create big goals. Let's just dream big and achieve greater success. That's the best thing we can do in order to change this trend of man dominance. Thank you so much. So let me check. One moment. Yeah, I wanted to show this one here. Melissa, your presentation was insightful and realistic. Not much has changed at the system level for women's progression in businesses since 1970s. There's still a dearth of female leaders at the top. Thank you so much, Alice. Yeah, I do agree with you. And I think that's why it's important, not only us having that conference, but us going back to our own jobs and our own positions and thinking about how can we change that. And I really think about, you know, my seven-year-old daughter, how can I change that for her? How can I make her life easier and all the lives of the children easier when they grow up and they realize that they actually can do anything that they want? And I think that's what we have to aim for. Like Amalia said, Let's dream big and try to change those statistics.
thank you so much. So I think there is no other question for everyone. So before we conclude, I would like to invite our speakers to share any final thoughts or reflections on today's presentation. Your closing remarks would be greatly appreciated for this. My close remarks is just together we are unstoppable. So let's create a group of support so we can be unstoppable. I like that. And I also feel like one of the key themes here is dream big and keep going after it. And there's always networks you can find that will help you get to where you want, where you want to go. And the first step is being part of a organization and webinar such as this. So, um, yeah, I, le I learned a lot from the other speakers and, and a lot of good insights and inspiration as well. So hopefully it was valuable for all the attendees. So don't forget about the most difficult job in the world that every woman has in her life. Men could never, never dream to be able to do that job in their life, never. So if you think you're not strong enough, Remember that video and remember that you are so strong that you are doing the most difficult job in the world and there is nothing that must stop you. Please don't stop dreaming. Have a dream, have a vision, go to Google, your best friend, find the things that you need, organizations, events, people, go to LinkedIn, network on LinkedIn with different people and then create a better future for yourself, for your daughter if you have one and for our future we as a women can do so much more i think the potential in us hasn't been covered yet so we have very big way to go thank you so much everyone so additionally i would like to express my sincere gratitude to our speakers sofia agustina margaret Safford. Melissa Angelini and Amalia Gregorian for sharing their invaluable insights today. Your expertise has significantly enriched our discussion. If any attendees wish to contact all of you regarding this presentation, could you please share also your email address in the chat box? I will share in a second. I'm trying to get it. <laughs> I put my LinkedIn in instead of my email. Yeah, that's a good idea. We can network on LinkedIn. Right. Yeah. yeah. I'm following you. My name is Melissa Angelini. I'm trying to get here like exactly to do it properly. There you go. Thank you so much, um, speaker. So I will also provide my email address here on the chat box for those who are not yet a member of the ITC. You can definitely send an email to me. So um, again, a heartfelt thank you for all of the participation and to our speakers for your active engagement and insightful questions. Your contribution have made this webinar truly enriching. Please keep an eye also in your inbox for follow-up information, including details on how to claim your participation and certificate. So as we wrap up, I wish you all a wonderful afternoon and look forward to welcoming you back to our future webinars. Until next time, take care. And Thank you goodbye. very much. Everybody. Thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you everybody. Bye. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye.